Jungle experience in Season 14 has been a little bit funky. When you have screenshots like this, where you have more KP, more farm, more objectives, yet you're the same level, it's kind of telling you why an oppressive early game jungling style is the way to play. Why you need to invade, why you need to gank, why you need to counter jungle, and only fourth on that list would be, hey, maybe you should do some camps. And obviously, Rek'Sai is a kind of good champion to show, but you know, why not do it with Evelyn, where farming is typically what you want to do, However, what if it's just about getting SIGs and then sowing chaos? We'll look at two games for you today, High ELO Challenger, but obviously any of the champions that you play will suit this playstyle. I'm going to structure it in that every single one of you can replicate it. While farming away, as the Evelyn's doing here on the first clear, is absolutely fine. You can still sequence 7 to 8, 9 CS per minute. Really, the idea is it's not the only way to play, and for some players, you might be better off playing exactly like this and ignoring your farm a little bit more. However, you still have to be smart, and everything needs to be done well. And as you see, the Evelyn does a full clear into a bottom lane gank because it is gankable. Graves has done a full clear down as well. That's why this is crazy, because you see the Evelyn get this clean pickup, we see that Graves try and do something about it, and now normally, what would we do here? We don't have prior for the scuttle crab, we go back to base, we buy Dark Seal, we do the topside scuttle crab, we think about counter jungling, full sequencing again. Why do that when we can just go and fight? And let's be honest here, as you watch the Evelyn go and chase down and try and get some more kills, this is not for the weak mechanical player. If you know your champion and you understand the limits of your champion, then yes, go ahead, play like this. But the idea here is, again, not to reset. Because the Graves dies and you know he's going to respawn and go topside, don't go back to base again. Do the top scuttle, gank top lane. Why? Because it's gankable. And if you're wondering, well, for Caillou, what if the lane isn't gankable? 99% of the time when you think something is ungankable, it really is still gankable. That's why I made a video on how to gank. But if you want to make sure that every lane is always gankable, you absolutely must head over to Vakayu.gg. I have a free jungle improvement resource as well as a dedicated program where we have jungle video courses, jungle coaching, coaching VOD libraries, weekly free video content see nowhere else, as well as Q&As and patch note rundowns, as well as a private jungle discord. And if there's one thing I'm good at, it's making junglers reach their goals as we're seeing with the record amount of people reaching their goals at the start of season 14. If you want to climb faster than anyone you know, jungle diff every game you play, click the link below or head to vakayu.gg. Now obviously as you would have seen, we went back to base, we didn't die, Graves will steal our grump. I mean that's also why you gang top lane, right? Because you know that Graves has died, he's gonna respawn, show up on that top side, let me take away his gang. Yeah, he gets a grump and some grubs, but who cares, because we're gonna keep fighting. We're not about sequencing. However, if you see that the Graves isn't exactly on the grubs, and you see that, hey, it's 5 minutes 30 to 6 minutes, which means that's the level 6 wave, why don't we just, you know, gank the Twisted Fate again? Yes, the Evelyn has a scanner, and she goes for the gank. Why, if you're an Evelyn, do you not gank an immobile mid laner when you have this kind of charm? All you really need is a micro slow from whatever laner you're playing with, and it's an absolute free kill for you. So in this particular oppressive game style, you have multiple choices. I can either go and invade the Graves in his jungle and kill him if I have bottom lane prior. I can also just go ahead and do the objective, but sacrifice my bottom side quadrant and my bottom lane. The downside there is you also might lose the dragon, or instead if the lane is neutral and Graves is invadable, you can just kind of do all of them. So in this particular case, go ahead and gank the bottom lane. And after this, now you can finally do some camps because eventually everyone's dead. So, you know, there's nothing else to do. You can see that Graves has really tried to react and rotate to all of these plays, but he simply cannot keep up. So if you're playing a Rak'Sai and Elise or whatever, which we'll look at in the second example, sure, you can go ahead and do this. But you can also do this with even farming style junglers, provided you look at the lanes, keep your eyes up, look for the next play on the map, and focus on that way more than you ever think about camps. Now, personally, you know, I always focus a bit more on camps. I'm not really about this playstyle, but obviously it's kind of viable and you can see how strong it can be even on a typical farming jungler. Now, when you're an assassin style champion or just a really strong champion one on one, you can basically take the next level, which, as you see, is using your six and going in for these hyper fightery moments, right? We got a 3v3 on the grub area. Let's go. Let's fight. Now, Evelyn does die. That is the risk here, but our teammates are able to clean up for the most part. And that's the thing about the style as well. When you force these fights and your teammates get involved or you force them in their lanes, if you do it well, they also get fed. Your name might be on the building, you might have to call in sick, but there's no reason why your friends can't get rich with you. Now next up, I'm going to say something that might irritate a lot of you who pay attention to my content and also know how I like to explain things. I've been telling you to give up grubs. I think obviously, objectively, you should. However, when you're this fed and you want to play this aggressive playstyle, and you don't necessarily want to get into a scaling farming battle against Graves and Sunners, do your two camps, you wanted to gank top lane but Pike did the business for you, and now go and contest. Yes, it is in fact 
A4V2. And by every bone in my body, I'm telling you to give this up, sequence down, try and do something bottom lane, take a dragon, do the scuttle crab. Objectively, this is what you should do. However, if you are in this sort of ganking, hyper aggressive playstyle, then coin flipping is what you do. And even though we haven't really had much of a coin flip in this game, why not do two in a row and die again? Now, again, I am not an advocate for this, but you denied them one grub. Therefore, you say worth, and we go for the next play. And here's the thing about this even though I'm telling you not to do it, and I'm also telling you to do it, you have to remember when you're an assassin or jungler that can just get fed over time with gold, think Silas, for example. These plays, even though they look low economy, low efficiency, and honestly downright stupid, you know as the Evelyn here that these plays, while they compromise the enemy, they don't really hurt you as much because you have a lead from a good early, and every time you leave base, you think about fighting, ganking, ulting before you think about going to your camps. And now we just got a kill on the Tristana, you have multiple options again. Do I do the scuttle and the dragon? Do I do my own camps and think about going to the mid lane thereafter? No, we are playing aggressive, oppressive. So we go into his jungle, why? Because we have lane of prior for that. But even if you didn't have lane of prior, you'd make the play. If you're Lee Sin, if you happen to be even a Karthus with exhaust, if you even happen to be a Lilia or whatever the hell you play, this play is the one that does come with a lot more risk. So your mechanical prowess has to be on point. You have to know break even points of itemization. You have to know when you're strong enough against certain matchups to do this. And sometimes you will come a few HP points short of killing a Twisted Fate, and in fact, you will die. But again, the whole point is look at the game, look at the graves, same CS, less KP, no dragons, can't settle down in sequence because you're not letting him. The point of the screenshot at the beginning of the video was that that Kha'Zix invaded me multiple times and died multiple times. That was a horrific application of this jungle strategy. If you're going to do this strategy, you damn well better be 633 at least by 10 minutes with an absolute insane amount of pressure on the map that would really piss off a Kale, a Senna, or anyone that just wants to farm and scale. Because every bit of golden experience you get from these activities is stronger on you than anybody else. You know, provided you know what to do next. Which, as you see from the Evelyn's case, is not do the red side quadrant, do the top side quadrant, wait for your ult, no. Do Raptors, do red, see Tristana, kill Tristana. And now the very classical move, go into the jungle, play the vision, look for another play, if nothing, wait for the ADC, and do it again. Yes, you should be doing this in any jungle, especially in Evelyn at this point. And yes, unfortunately, we did lose the dragon from that earlier death. But I want you to think about Kane, about Hecarim, about Kha'Zix, about Rengar. All of these champions can also do this. You get kills, you push the limits, you get a little bit lucky, you stack your dark seals and your hubris itemizations, and then you hover around. And the term I have for this in the private discord is Ooga Booga. Not really my term, it's dudes' term, but honestly, I like it, it works. You're just doing Ooga Booga jungling. However, I think we can agree that when you get into high elo and you play with this kind of tempo and aggressiveness, there's not as much a coin flip as you might think. It's like betting on mathematical models versus betting with your gut. Yeah, there's still an element of, you know, coin flipping, but at the same time, there's way more likelihood for success because you're thinking through your pathing, you're thinking through outcomes, you're weighing advantages and disadvantages, you're looking at the whole picture to make a decision, even if it is leaning to the higher risk variety. And as the Evelyn does a quadrant again, because honestly, at this point, there's nothing else to do, we're just waiting for the next fight, which shows up, it's 14 minutes, we have our ult up, we say, Graves, it's time to die. Now this fight's gonna go on for a little bit, but everyone's gonna clean up, it's gonna be a good position, they're gonna go into the Herald. Now while some people do like to play like this every single game, I don't really advocate this in general unless you know what you're doing, which understands pressure points for pathing, mechanical prowess in your champion, and obviously those break-even points for when you can actually make these plays. You also have to make sure you're getting that success rate from these plays, because if you don't, the enemy jungler who is farming, who is playing more normal, will have that baseline and will be ready to take over when you stop doing Ooga Booga and you end up being really unfed. Now, in the last video, I spoke about the 6,000 gold of 40 minutes being the, I guess it's the Vakayu 1v9 carry rule, whereby if at 14 you have 6,000 gold, you're in position to totally carry the game. In this game, the Evelyn now has 7,800 as she does this Herald, the Graves is at 6,700. That means, my friends, that while there's no more defense, it's really just a highly offensive game plan where the enemy will get a lot of gold too, you just have more than they do. But what if you're a Rek'Sai or a Javan or a ganking style jungler and you don't have the baseline to click quadrants and full clear around your Ooga Booga jungling aggressiveness? Well then, you can just do your Raptors Red Krugs, look bottom line for a gank that is no longer available, and invade the enemy jungler. Well, for Kayu, what if they started on the bottom side and went top side? Then you can gank the mid lane and of course gank the top lane as well. So much so that I'm editing in this part where I coached a Rel just before she gets nerfed, obviously, so replace this with any other jungler that you like to play, where she had an ungankable bottom lane, ganked the mid lane, 
didn't hit the plant to see the enemy jungle on the top side, which is what we discussed she should do, but regardless hit her plant and then counter ganked the enemy jungler, who is obviously going to full clear and gank top lane. We were present, we got the kill, and this Rek'Sai instead invades the Jarvan and keeps the pressure up. The Jarvan's bottom lane don't want to rotate over. They want to lane, they want to clear, they don't want to get dove. And when it's ungankable, the best thing you can do as a Rek'Sai, as a jungler here, is apply pressure on the Jarvan to prevent him ganking that lane. So when you say, well, Vakai, this doesn't work in non-challenger high elo diamond or whatever, I just showed you a gold rel. It does. As long as you know the limits on your champion and understand the mechanical limits of the teammates you have, you will always come out on top with the best mechanics and the best decisions. And now obviously the next thing is, hey, we want to control our camps. We don't want to be too risky from now on. No, you become a mosquito. Mosquito jungling, we can call this. The Jarvan's gonna go back to his top side, knowing he died and lost things on the bottom side. So you go across mid lane to create that prio, and then you just be a thorn in his side. You just keep poking and poking and laughing. Eventually, you can fall back and actually do yourself the scuttle grab. And now Jarvan's gonna think, hey, you know what? Rex is probably doing the blue side quadrant like a good theoretical jungler. And I'm gonna go ahead and do my red side quadrant, do the grugs, of course. I can relax a little bit because the grubs have spawned. Rex is like, yeah, I'm doing those, by the way. Why base? I know you're not gonna contest. You think I'm somewhere else? I'm actually on the grubs. Because you track the enemy jungler correctly, you understand the pathing. Everything about this playstyle that I've referenced in this video has been 50-50, high risk, ooga booga, I've used weird terms for it. At the end of the day, all it is, is understanding gaps in tempo and where you can actually shop your big jungle phase to deny the enemy jungler from getting to play the game, all while getting yourself fed and your laners fed. It's a difficult playstyle, but one, if you do correctly, can really help you climb if you struggle with the sequencing and flowing game style that isn't honestly as potent as it has been because the jungle is weaker this season. And what this also does, and you saw this from the graves, the enemy junglers end up in these very tight situations. You've been forced into a box, the enemy jungler has put you there, the Rex has put the Jarvan in a box, and he doesn't really know what to do. He's forced into these suboptimal aggressive decisions, and Rex has right there now doing a quadrant to counter gank to shut him down. By shut him down, I mean prevent him from existing, not shut him down with gold. Imagine this Jarvan being remotely fed. But once he's dead, again, we have multiple choices that we can do. Do you go to the dragon? Do you go to the red and then maybe gank bottom lane? Do you push mid lane and get some turret plates with your beautiful grubs that you've taken? That sounds nice, doesn't it? No. The Javan was bottom side, he took his bottom quadrant. I've been invading him all game. Why stop now? Keep the pressure up. Invade times 100. Hey, your raptors and red are up? Hello, sir. Can I take those? Okay, you know what? You take the red. I'll let you have the red because I want to fall back to my blue side quickly. And then kind of bait you to gank either top lane or mid lane. Probably mid lane. I'll shatter the scenario and kill the LeBlanc. There we go, now I'm 202. Now, much like the other game, normally we would just do a quadrant. You see bottom lane situations and you think, you know what, I can't rotate to that. I'm not going to get there in time. This methodology requires you to go there and get that kill. Because the summary of this entire video is jungle flow. The term I've used before, I really focus down on it in the courses. But if you can see one play to the next, one play to the next, the more you get in a row, it's like you get bonus multipliers. Hey, you got a three good decision streak? Get some extra bonus gold as a jungler. Hey, you made six great decisions in a row? Ding, 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 you get a free two level lead. Every step you take here to get in front of the jungler, cut him off and ruin his life, and actually make great mechanical plays, you keep compounding that lead. So much so that the Rek'Sai keeps doing it. Hey, Javan, take the dragon. I don't care, I'm going top lane for another kill. I want the six grubs. The grubs here, they can be a little bit of a bait, but they're still really great if you actually know how to snowball in end games and basically push in the mid and the late game. That's not something you really need to have a guide about, just ensure you're hitting turrets. Like you see the Rek'Sai dive the top lane, take that first turret, go back into the river, kill the Jarvan again, and then you look at 40 minutes, she has 6,800 gold, and the Jarvan has 4,500 gold. As always, I will leave a link to the description so you can have a look for yourself. The massive factor in this game versus the other game was that the Graves had a decent baseline of his own farm, and he managed to make sure his economy was somewhat close to the Evelyn. He also got some shutdowns, he played well to absorb that pressure. The Jarvan could not match. The Jarvan wanted to be what the Rek'Sai was, and he could never reach that level. Which means when you try and replicate this badly, as you can see from the Jarvan, you get no baseline, no camps to farm in the meantime, and now you become predictable. When you're predictable and you're against someone who's playing this style, you're not going to enjoy yourself. You're going to be permanently invaded, lose camps, lose your life, lose objectives, lose laners because you can't counter gank, and it's the worst situation to be. But fortunately, if you want to counter the style of jungling or just know how to do it and play every other kind of jungling, that's that video on your screen now.